this last example that I'd like to go through is card-based layouts, but we're really going to shake things up and push cards probably farther than you have looked at them before. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to talk through uh, some of the HTML that might be used to put this card together, just so to show you how you can think through the most semantic markup that you might be using on that. And then we're going to mix up both Flexbox and Grid in dealing with these cards and this layout on our next code pen. So as always, the starting code pen is available inside of the chapter 14 on the website for the course. So let's start here. And we have a series of four items here for this particular web page. And uh, they all have the same type of content. So I'm just going to focus on this first one. And then I'll give you a few minutes to code the other three. Uh, so let's look at what we have here, what we have give, been given here in our notation. So we have a section with an ID of artists. This might eventually be something you want to plug into uh, either the page that you are looking at here, uh, uh, the home page that we've been working on, it might become part of the inside page or a, an additional page in this website. So let's set it up from the start with that section with an ID of artists. And I've given that section a heading because sections require headings. And we've given an H2 because there's likely an H1 elsewhere on the website. After that, then we have basically these units of content that have almost no markup in them. So I have here the words uh, mixed media, Annie, Annie Ron Ronke, I'm sorry if I pronounced her name wrong, Annie Ronke, the image, and then a little bit of a description with a link to AnnieRonke.com. So how are we going to go about marking this up? This is reflective of a trend that we have seen quite a bit in uh, cards where Often those words, mixed media or teensy tiny, they're at the top of the card. And then Annie Runke, who is the focus of this card, would be in larger type. Because this is our artists. That's the main uh, identifier of this section of the website. Annie Runke is an artist, so she's the next most important thing. And the fact that she works in mixed media is the third most important thing. So. That would indicate, in terms of our headings, that our artists is the H2, Annie Ronke would be the H3, and mixed media winds up being the H4. But it does mean it looks like those headings are out of order. And that's OK. You can, in fact, put your headings out of order if you're trying to tell the story in the way that I just told you. Our artists, Annie Ronke, mixed media. So let's start by putting in that particular markup. This will be mixed media is the H4 here. And then Annie Ronke will be the H3. Okay. Then we're going to have our image here in place. I've given you the image because here in CodePen, uh, you have to have a pro version of CodePen in order to host images and you wouldn't know what the URL was for the image. So I've given you that along with the alt text. After that, we have a bit of text here that is the description of what's going on here, this uh, description of the artist. That, of course, is just a paragraph. So we'll mark that up as such. And then I just put in the words down here on the bottom. Be sure to link to this website. That's her website. So we'll just mark that up. And we can say something like, uh, make it a paragraph and then an a h ref equals quote https www.annyronke.com we'll make it open in a new window target equals underscore blank underscore blank and then we can say visit website slash a slash p. Okay, so that's sort of the general markup of the text that we've been given here. Now we need to think a little bit more about how we would mark up uh, or indicate that this is one unit of text, whatever that unit happens to be. So many of you are probably thinking, well, we should take all of this and we should um, probably just wrap a div around it. That would be one approach. 
But I think we could argue that we're a little bit more specific here. This chunk of information could potentially show up on a syndication feed and it stands alone and tells its own story. We can see that this is a mixed media thing. It's Annie Ronke's work. Here's an example of her work. Here's a little bit of information about her. There's a whole little mini story in this chunk of content. And if that's the case, then you can make use of the article tag. So we'll start this with article and we'll end it with slash article. Okay, so that is my thoughts on how we would go about marking this up. And as always, good markup is the best way to start this type of thing. You can go through and mark up all the rest of these, then we'll go on to the styling after that. Now we're going to um, take a quick peek at my markup. It looks pretty much exactly like the first one. It's just a series of articles that I have here on this web page. So the next thing that I need to think about is, as I keep telling you the whole way through this course, the whole secret of managing layout, whether you're working with Flexbox or you're working with Grid, is managing parents and children. One of the things that we're going to need to do in this website is treat each of these particular units of content, in this case they happen to be the articles, we want to make sure that we can grab onto those articles and manipulate them in whatever way we want in terms of layout. Then we might also manipulate what goes on inside of the article for its layout. So we've got two types of layouts that we might be working on here with these particular cards. So let's take a quick peek at how our parents and children are configured inside of our HTML and see if we need to add anything before we move on to the layout side of this. So uh, here in CodePen, if you go to the little down arrow next to the HTML and uh, you say fold all, I had problems getting this working in Firefox myself, but it seems to be working in Chrome, which is what I'm using now. It seems to be working there better. If you fold it all up, it folds all into the single section element, which contains everything we're working with. If you hit the down arrow once, it'll show you that we now have the following children of the section. We have the H2 and we have our four articles. So that means that if I was to do something here in my CSS and say, let's say artists, the artists ID here, and I said display grid, uh, what would happen is, and let's say grid template columns, and let's say I wanted to do something like um, repeat four comma one FR. The H2 becomes part of this particular issue here on the web page. See that? Because the H2 is a child of artists, as are all of these articles. So even though I just said make four columns, Grid will do its best. It says, okay, I made four columns and I put in the H2 and the first three articles into those columns. Oops, I have an extra item. I'll add another row and I'll start populating my columns from there. So that is exactly what just happened with this particular layout. To get around that problem, we're going to have to group together our articles in some way. So you actually don't need that CSS at all. We're not gonna use it. Uh, what we'll add to this then is a div with a class of, I have just called it article wrap. And because that's the whole purpose, is to wrap around this article. It serves no purpose whatsoever in communicating anything about this web page. The whole purpose of this div is to hold a class and to give us a, uh, uh, an environment for laying out our cards in some method or another. So that is the last thing that we need to add to our HTML before we're ready to move on and do some styling to what we have.